Everyone, uh, this is Dr. Holroyd again, and today we're going to talk about the relationship of the cell and the membrane potential of the cell. And its relationship to electrical circuits. And this is part of what Dr. Yusuf will be talking to you about next week, where we look at membrane potentials, action potentials, and so on and uh, circuits, batteries, capacitors, and so on. So we'll just go over a, a little bit of information that hopefully you know already, and this is about when we look at the cell. So we'll do a normal picture like we do of a cell. And you should know that inside the cell you have both positive and negative charges. You have uh, sodium ions inside the cell, you have potassium ions, chloride, all number of different charges. But the interesting thing about a cell is, is it also has an excess of negative charges from the cell proteins. So the cell proteins are negative. So that what that means is, is when you look overall with a cell, I'll just get rid of these charges. Overall, when you look at a cell, we have positive and negative all matched up, because of course positive attracts negative. So for in the most part we have a positive and negative all matched up. But because of these negatively charged proteins within the cell, we have this excess of negative. So these negatives don't have positives to match up to. And because they don't have positives to match up to, they try and get as far away from each other as possible. Now of course this is a two-dimensional picture. The cell is three-dimensional. So what it means is, is these negative charge charges find themselves on the edges of the cell, so very close to the plasma membrane. So what happens is that because of these positive, uh, negative charges from the proteins, we have negatively charges up against the plasma membrane, which means, of course, that from outside the cell, these negative charges will attract positive. So it means when you look at the cell here, we have these negative charges on the inside and positive charges on the outside. So let's now take a little segment here of the cell, and let's go down here, and let's have a look and see what that looks like. So we now have the plasma membrane, so we'll draw that a bit better, so we know it has the, the lipid bilayer forms the plasma membrane and on the inside so this is the inside of the cell we have the negative charge and on the outside we have the positive charges wanting to come in now at the moment with this diagram what we're saying is is that our lipid bilayer is non-conducting And this is not quite true in the real world, and we'll get to it in a minute, but what we're looking at now is, is saying that the cell membrane is just a simple lipid bilayer. There's no proteins there or anything at the moment, which of course we know not to be true, but it just helps in our understanding. So if we look at that, we've got positive charge on the outside, so don't forget, outside, and negative charge on the inside. So what this is sort of equivalent to is something that you would have done or that you will do in physics which is a capacitor. So with a capacitor we have a positive charge on one plate and a negative charge on the other side. And this capacitor stores electrical potential energy. And so basically we have a capacitor here and we have a capacitor here. So what it means is, is the fact we have the negative charge on the inside, the positive charge on the outside, a non-conducting medium in the middle, we basically have a capacitor. So we are storing electrical potential energy there. And this stored electrical potential energy that we have in the cell, we call the membrane 
potential. And what happens is, is that most cells, not all cells, but most cells, when they are at rest, so when the cells aren't doing anything, so when they're at rest, they have what's called the resting membrane potential. Now this resting membrane potential is really important. And the reason why it's really important is, is because by changing, so by changing the membrane potential, so changing from rest, we change the activity of the cell. So it's a way of causing a response in the cell is to change its membrane potential away from rest. All right. So that's the beginning part. We'll continue on in another part in a minute. So I'll be back to you where we'll now look at what happens when we add proteins to the membrane 